Early in the war, a pilot's firepower is limited to how many bombs he can carry in the cockpit, a problem that's solved when engineers add bomb racks to the bomber's underbelly. This increase in payload marks the beginning of the bomber arms race. The festooning of struts and wires that they had is very high drag, so the performance is extremely modest. They were operating literally at three to 400 feet and very often themselves were being shot down by enemy defenses or even their own bomb blast. Despite the biplane's limitations, military planners embrace it as a tool to extend the battlefield. By delivering firepower behind enemy lines, bombers can attack the enemy's heart while forcing it to shepherd vital resources to protect its back. Still, the biplane can't escape the inherent limitations in its wing design. The solution comes after the war, when an entirely new beast appears in the sky, the single-wing all-metal bomber, the monoplane. The monoplane design removes one of the biplane wings and repositions the single wing in a way that's much more aerodynamically efficient. It's from this monoplane wing that the bomber can produce the speed and thrust necessary for additional lift. This gives the bomber speed and range undreamed of in World War I. The monoplane brings everything that the bomber crew wants. And no one wants it or exploits it more than Adolf Hitler. In the lead up to World War II, Hitler amasses a bomber armada second to none. In 1939, he thrusts it on Poland. Aided by the tactical support of the Stuka dive bomber, the Nazis blitz across Europe and ultimately into London. 